Hello and welcome. This is Sandra Hart again with Life Over 60. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be interviewing my husband today for his 92nd birthday going on to 93. So let's get started and um, have a visit with my own very Larry David. with my husband who is 92 going on 93 once he hits his 92nd birthday he's working on 93 it's all over <laughs> so we are going to ask him some questions today and his name is Arthur so this is Arthur Thank this you. is my um, mr. Larry David clone <laughs> all right now, the first thing I'm going to ask you, since this is going to be up uh, just close to the new year, have you made any new year re resolutions, Arthur? Uh, to live to 93. That's good. That's no, uh, any, I, I don't make these things, you know, I mean, I don't have the, uh, uh, the wear it all, you know, to make resolutions and then uh, not keep it. And, and I, I don't make resolutions. Why is that? I don't know. I guess it's been working for you. Yeah, <laughs> You're it's like almost they, 93. Like, you know, <laughs> like I can stop smoking, and, you know, and all that. You know, people have to have something, uh, you know, to look forward to. Well, I made a resolution. I'm going to do this. That's okay. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you something about our relationship. Yeah. We've been married 35 years. Um, what is your best memory of our dating year? My best memory, I have a blank. That's a hard one, right? <laughs> I have a blank. My what? best memory, well, I had a lot of good memories, you know. I, you know, you have to understand where I came from. I was 57 years old <laughs> when I got married. And, uh, you know, uh, I spoke to a, to a fellow. I said, I'm going to, with a, a woman, beautiful woman, very talented, lovely, and I, I love her and so forth. And she has three young kids. And he looked at me and he said, pack your bags and run. Run and don't even look back. I think you told that the last yeah, yeah, yeah. time. No, I don't know. And I said, why? He says, don't marry a woman with three young kids. And uh, but, yeah, I have a good memory yeah. about the time when um, I was invited by Bob Tisch for the fifth anniversary of his Lowe's Hotel oh, in Monte oh, Carlo. Oh, is that wonderful? He chartered a branded jet and Pat Cooper and a lot of other yeah. celebrities and yeah. I. Yeah. We and I, I could invite somebody, so oh, I, I invited. That's all right. Uh, I invited yeah. um, you to come along with me to Monte Carlo. We stayed in a beautiful suite overlooking the Mediterranean, and I can remember. I think I can. Well, we had so wonderful times. I mean, he took us all over to, to uh, various everywhere to cons, and, uh, cans, oh and these, everybody right. wonderful restaurants. But wonderful. anyway, my only vision of you is taking our complimentary morning uh, breakfast. breakfast. You know, the baguettes and mm. the little pastries and everything, and going out on the balcony and feeding it to the birds. <laughs> That's you know, this is what the, the, you know. This is what it is. I came from uh, my mother used to feed all the feral cats, all the cats and the dogs, and it came from there. And uh, to this day, I feed the birds in the morning, and I feed the squirrels uh, peanuts. And I have to get all these things. It's a big job, you know, putting all these things together, and and then going out and feeding. You know, it's time consuming and so forth. But uh, nobody, nobody's doing it. So I figured I'll do it. And uh, I well, feel, that's a good thing. you know, I feel it's a, it's a good thing. You know, they wait for me, and the squirrels look for me. And unfortunately, uh, somebody's poisoning the squirrels. 
Oh, I don't see as many around no, as, as I did and, uh, and it's very unfortunate that there's so many evil people in this world. Uh, the next question I want to ask you is, um, what do you think has been the greatest accomplishment in your life? Greatest accomplishment in my life is living to 92. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yeah. To well, live in the 92, were, I think that's the greatest accomplishment. Well, you were a big producer of nah, uh, a nah. financial show. You started the whole thing, and then after you retired and quit, yeah. everybody glommed in yeah, on the yeah, concept. Yeah. But that was you. You were in the New Yorker yeah. magazine, yeah, yeah. featured. And so you have had a lot of, for someone that came from the Bronx and didn't go to college, you really have done uh, a lot of, a lot of. Really? You really Great think thing. so? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Coming from you, it's... it's, it's okay. Now I'm going to ask you, you in 92 years, you've had probably a lot of cars. What is your very favorite car that you've ever had in your entire life? Favorite car I ever had? I know the answer life. to that, but you can't remember. Yeah. It, it was a... Uh, you know, I had some big cars. How about the Amphicar? Uh, yes, I, I, I had an Amphicar. I had a car that went in the water. It was in a James Bond film, and uh, I used to go into water into a lake, and uh, all of a sudden it turned into a boat, you know, and and then uh, and then I drive up to land and so forth. It was very uh, interesting. It was an interesting car. I think it was built in 1962, 64, and I bought it new, and uh, it was. Uh, people used to ask me all the time, "Hey, how much the cars? How fast does it go? You know," and so. I used to uh, get annoyed, you know. It was just, well, whatever but, happened to it? It, it, it? You know, it's my stupidity. Stupid is, stupid does. I do a lot <laughs> of stupid things. And uh, uh, I didn't have a garage for it, actually. When I well, you put, lived in New York. I right? lived in New York. I put it in a garage. It was expensive and so forth. And one day I, when I was out, it was snowing and the, uh, uh, the streets were slippery and I was going down a little hill. And I, I went into a bus, the back of a bus. Ooh. Nothing happened to the bus or anything like that. And well, what, my how car, about you? my nothing happened to me. It was an, an accident. It just, it just pushed the, uh, the front in a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fender and the hood. And so, and what do I, what am I going to do? It's very cold and it's snowing. And uh, I called up some guy, and some guy came over with a tow truck. And he says, I'll tow it in the garage. And I said, okay. So I towed it in the garage, and uh, uh, I sold it for $200. What is the craziest thing that you've ever done? I had, uh, Wait a minute. I had crazy things. What's the craziest thing i ever done? Uh, I have to think about it. I well, you told me a story about when you were a single guy dating all these yeah. rich Women. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> and this woman you loved don't. clothes. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> I, I had met a, a, a beautiful young girl, you know, and uh, she lived in a townhouse, which her father owned, and uh, she was very wealthy. And uh, I don't know, uh, we came out of it, but we hit it. You know, she really liked me, and she was pursuing me a little bit. And here, I, you know, I really didn't have anything, and... Uh, uh, we went out to a, a number of places and so forth. The one Christmas uh, time, Christmas night or something, I don't know what the heck it is, she had a major problem. Uh, she had too much. And what she had was too much clothes, too much shoes, uh, and the closets were full. And every time she'd get up to go to get dressed, uh, it'd take an hour and a half, two hours to get dressed, to put this match with this, the shoes with that. <laughs> Oh, I, I know mean, people like it that. It used to, used to make me crazy. I said, are, are we going? Yeah, we have a reservation. Or we're going to see a play. And, and every, she put something on, and then she take it off and, and so forth. And I said, I'm going to do something for you. Uh, and uh, she said, what is that? And uh, when she wasn't looking, we had a fire in the fireplace. I took all the clothes, and I threw it into the fireplace. Oh, my gosh. You know? <laughs> and uh, it was smoking up the place and all that. She came down, what do you do? What you do? What you do? She went nuts. I don't blame yeah, her. She went completely nuts. Let, let me ask you a question. Did you ever go out with her again? No, no. She <laughs> never wanted to speak to me again. I wonder why. You know? And, uh, you know, she never wanted to speak to me again. But she was gorgeous. She had everything. And, and uh, this is stupid things. Stupid is, stupid does. You know, these are stupid things that I did. And uh, do I regret it? Uh, somewhat. <laughs> somewhat, you know, not 100%. So, so, you know, when I was younger. 
And uh, I used to go to a lot of parties and uh, a lot of fairs, and I used to be uh, uh, meet a lot of people, and I was very interested in people and so forth. And today, when I look now at 92, I have no friends, and I have they're all dead, and I have no people, and the only uh, person I have is Sandra, and my and dog, and, 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 and my dog and her children. They have their own agenda, and my dog. Pesto, who's lying in a row uh, on a rug and looking at me. Pesto, <laughs> right? That's the only one I have. What do you think about the um, album, 90, uh, 90, that's coming out? It's very exciting. You or excuse know, me, it's 32,000 days. 32,000 days. days. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, I believe that everybody in this whole world should have something to look forward to. I have, uh, Is that I have, your secret to longevity? Yes, I, uh, you know, that's one of the things. I had nothing to look forward to. I was, uh, I was bobbling a cork in the waves. I hit the, 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 the pier and back. Uh, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have any, any future. And all of a sudden the album came along and now I have something to look forward to. Uh, that uh, from uh, uh, the composer, from uh, the composer's view, he says that this is his bad work. And if, it's, if this is his best work, it's going to be really exciting. And I gave him an idea. Yeah. That one painting you did during the last financial show you did, and I think you did it with Magic Marker, was so wild and crazy. You've never done anything since or no, before. No, no, no. But I showed him that, and I said, remember that painting that Arthur did? He says, I didn't know Arthur did it. And I sent him a picture. He says, that's going to be the album cover. So he came to New York picked it up, spent some time with you, and um, he's going to put that picture on the uh, It's frustration. It was called frustration, you know. I was frustrated. I was doing a show and I was trying to put it together and so There's so many frustrating times in your life and uh, I used to uh, I used to go to the painting there and with the magic marker and fill in different things, you know. Uh, stupid things. It's a, it it's, it's really it's a really bucket. stupid painting, no, and if he puts it in the album, it maybe become a collector's item. Maybe uh, maybe somebody will say, "Hey, this guy had talent," but unfortunately, he did only one painting. You know. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, yeah, but uh, and I feel bad about it. You know, it's it, there's a saying that I, I've told you years ago, and you brought it back to me, and uh, it's. Uh, about uh, procrastinating and look on the plains of hesitation bleach the bones of countless millions who at the dawn of decision sat down to wait and waiting died Very i mean good. When, when you think about it it's uh, it's awesome you know and uh, there's there's people all over billions of people that uh, that can't make decisions but uh, you have to make decision right or wrong Rather than just uh, uh, leave it go, procrastinate, and, say, and don't oh, procrastinate. Make should decision, I, right or wrong. Right. You make decision. Is that the advice that you would give yes. to your younger self? Yes, and there's two things uh, that you can do about it. If decision is wrong, you think about it, and and you try and do something about it. And uh, and if you can't do anything, you you forget about it and move forward. So uh, I'm not saying I practice it all the time, but uh, most of the time, I think that way. You know, if you can't do anything after you try to do something about it, so, uh, you, you know, you go ahead. I'm going to ask you, what is your dream vacation? I think I know the answer to this, but what would you, if you had your next vacation, what would your dream vacation be? Get on a ship and uh, <laughs> sail around the world. I knew it forever. Get on a ship and sail around the world. We've done it four times. Why don't you live on a ship? Maybe your dream yeah, would be yeah. to just move on a ship yeah, and it, just live on right. it. Right. Till and, your time's right. up. No, if I wasn't married, if I wasn't, the yeah, side no, of the no, if I wasn't married or anything like that, uh, I uh, would live on a ship. Yeah. I would, uh, I would book it for eleven months a year. Yeah. Eleven months a year, and then take well, off a month from uh, from uh, from the ship, yeah. and uh, wherever it goes, I'd go. It's just a wonderful time. People don't realize that you do nothing. And if you want to do something, you do something. Everything is, is there. The meals and, and uh, the accommodations, you don't have to travel. You don't have to knock yourself out. And, and it's just a wonderful existence. And there's a lot of people that do it. You know, you are one of the 
few World War II veterans still living. <laughs> you were in the Merchant Marines. You mm -hmm. said that you they drafted you for the Army, but they wouldn't take yeah. you. No, 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 no. You volunteered. No, no. I volunteered. I, I didn't realize what I was doing. Uh, I was 17 and a half or something like that. I didn't really realize what I was doing. And uh, uh, when it came to pass, when I joined the Merchant Marine, they took me the next no, day. No, but that you said that you, you tried the Army, but they wouldn't no, take no, you no, because no, you were no, no, to Wolf. No, no, no. Was, uh, that was after the Merchant Marine. Oh, oh, oh. But anyway, <laughs> uh, they, uh, I went to the Merchant Marine, and the next day they took me because there was a shortage. Uh, they didn't have enough uh, uh, people to man the ships, you know, going mm -hmm. in and out with mm -hmm. the supplies and so mm -hmm. forth. And when I found out that the Merchant Marine lost uh, more men per capita and wow. all armed forces combined, it was awesome. Uh, you know, the people, uh, ships were going down, being torpedoed, and, and it was a, I was a 17, 18 year old kid. Mm -hmm. What the hell did I know? I was the youngest guy but there. what did and, Merchant Marines do? Did you bring cattle, ammunition? Yeah, what did you yeah, do? We, uh, we brought cattle to Russia. We, uh, the, uh, most of them died on the ship. It was an awful situation. Brought uh, munitions and tank, you know, we brought all types of things that the, uh, the army and the, the forces needed. And uh, uh, the Merchant Marine are the unsung heroes of the Second World War. There is no question about it. Because there's a lot of memories, and if you cannot share memories with anybody, it's, it's not it worthwhile. Is, that's right. what you what have to is, be able to share memories. Mm -hmm. And it's like uh, you go out, in, 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 into a mountain or the woods, so you look at this beautiful sunset, and the sun is, it's a magnificent sunset, and you turn around to somebody and say, isn't that a beautiful sun? There's nobody. So you really don't get that feel that if, you, if somebody said, oh, corroborate, it's a beautiful sunset. You know, it's true, it's you know? Absolutely. But uh, uh, I have a wonderful wife. Uh, that's another thing that she keeps, keeps me alive. She is smart. And uh, not Keep only going. she's Keep smart, going. she's 80, she's still beautiful. But she didn't realize... Beauty is in the eye of the yeah, She didn't realize herself. <laughs> when I first met her, she was, she, well, she is still beautiful. When I first met her, she was beautiful. She had a thick head of hair, and I used to admire the hair, and I took pictures of her hair, and she had a beautiful skin, a beautiful face, and I met her at 45. Could you imagine, at 45, she was Well, really we got married at 45. Yeah. He met me when I was 39. Th 39. Yeah. She was really, really, truly beautiful. And, uh, See what age does. Yeah, and she, and, and uh, she carries it. You know, she still <laughs> carries it at, at 80. You know, a couple wrinkles here and then. But uh, uh, she is still pretty at 80. And, hey, I love you people that watch this. I, uh, and Sandra loves you all. And she always looks forward to speaking with you. And she does it not for herself, but she does it for you. So uh, uh, have a happy, merry Christmas. This is Christmas Day. It's a little overcast here. And it's quiet. And everybody is opening up their gifts and getting ready for their Christmas meal. But it's just a wonderful life here in Florida. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, much. Thank, thank you. Right. I, I, I love her. She's, <laughs> she we'll see is you from, again <laughs> with my chatty catty here. Ooh, the world seems so hollow.